Hey everybody, it's LS11, and welcome back to Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. Last time we made our way through City Dark Isle, taking on Lavrina in a rematch, and I am stupid, because I went all the way back to heal off screen, and now look, there was a healing machine right here. I was just honestly afraid of not being able to heal and then getting thrown into another battle because we are so close to our sixth and final team member. We should be getting it by the end of this episode. But we, we went ahead and healed up. I'm gonna not kid with you. Uh, this is post-commentary. You look cute, but you're also brave and bold to come to a place like this. It would be a shame to beat someone like you, but this is a good chance to score some points with Master Grievel. So yeah, we had a battle against Cypher Peon Kimley. I think I spent a few minutes trying to figure out how I was supposed to pronounce the name. And she started off with a Mightyana and a Stantler. It's really weird to think about it, because I want to talk about our sixth team member, because this is after I've beaten the entire game already, 100% Shadow Pokemon-wise. But we start with Ember and Bob Ross, as we do, the OG duo. And of course, it was uh, it was bad for us, because both Stantler and Mightyana had Intimidate, so that cut our attack harshly. Meaning that uh, Bob Ross's Brick Break wasn't going to do much. But we, used, we started off with these two, and uh, I guess this kind of gives me a chance to talk a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to reflect on the series yet, because I do that a lot in the final episode. But, this um, this episode was a good one, but it's really, it really annoys me that the Elgato had a lot of problems during this series. It really did, but I think during the last few episodes it gets a lot better. I think for the next episode or two here it's a little glitchy, but I learned how to watch for it to bug out. And anytime it would bug out, I would stop it and restart it. So there might be a glitch or so or two every so often, but I think either way, it's been fixed for the most part. But also, I don't know if it made it to camera or not because we had to skip a skip an episode where we got a few shadow Pokemon. In fact, it was two episodes ago that we skipped episode 15 that we had to skip. Um, we did miss that Shadow Kangaskhan that I will go back and get from Mirror B soon. In fact, I got it from Mirror B after this episode, I believe. Or, maybe not after this episode, but it's after one of these two episodes. I end up, I end up catching it, and there's a reason why. No, it's not after this episode, it's after the next episode, I believe. I just know it's when we face off against another face from the past, much like we did with Lavrina. But hopefully that'll be a live commentary me at that point. But it's going to be a little interesting at about 11 minutes, 23 seconds in this video. It's going to come to pictures and it's going to be me from about, from about 2 minutes and 54 seconds ago talking about what is going on with just pictures describing what was happening. But this fight was fairly simple. Um, she didn't pose too much of a threat. Kim Lee didn't, I mean. And you'll see in a minute here, I take a lot of extra caution because I think we're about to fight the opponent that has our sixth team member. And I was being dumb with it. Instead of looking up what the name of the um, Cypher Peon was, I was sitting there like, oh, this is gonna be it, this is gonna be it. By the way, we held our own really well here, but Ember unfortunately did take a fall to that Mighty Anna with Shadow Ball. And so I was like, uh, well, let's send out Gus, because... No, I decided not Gerald, actually, because Gerald had Surf, which would do damage to both Pokemon instead of just one. And it was really helpful having Surf on our side, and then uh, I just went after Mightyena, and Crush Claw did a lot of damage. I did not expect that. Zangus was tough. But from here, it was pretty smooth sailing, if I remember correctly. It's been it's been a few days since I did this one. Um, for time constraint purposes, I'll explain. This was the same day after the Gavin Sephiroth stream. Sephiroth stream. I've beaten Sephiroth since then, though, because we beat him like two days later on a Monday night. I think it was. It was either Monday or Tuesday that we beat him. But anyway. Sharpedo is out next. This one was... This Pokemon proves to be a bit more of a challenge, but I might be thinking of something else. Because at some point soon, I do go off screen and grind for levels where I had to face a Sharpedo a few times to do so. Because I went to the uh, Relgam Coliseum because you get levels pretty quick there. 
Um, I guess I can explain here. You'll see in a couple episodes that I've grinded levels intensely off screen. Uh, the best way to do that for me, just for me, if you decide to play through this game, do it however you want, but this is my tip. Put the EXP share on a Pokemon. Go to Real Game Coliseum. Enter the Coliseum over and over with that Pokemon in the front of your party. That way it's getting three times the experience. As opposed to double, which is what it would get if it was just holding the XP share. It gets a whole nother Pokemon's worth of experience every time. So I was going up at least like two or three levels every time I challenged the Coliseum. And I was jumping ten levels with all my Pokemon. And so we beat Kimley, and she was all like, Master Evil better not have seen this, because we know Master Grievel's got eyes all over the place. And then Magneton was ready to purify, and I was like, really? And I opened up the PC because I was like, oh, sweet. And, well, I didn't feel like walking the two inches back to go heal, so I literally just took Ember, Bob Ross, and you see the episode's already starting to glitch here. And I did the PC healing trick that I learned a while back. Where you just deposit and withdraw them. And then I fix the uh, positions of everyone in the party, putting Sableye back in the back of the party. Because that just made more sense to me. Anyway, so from here, right here is where I was like, alright, I think we catch our final team member up next, even though I knew how many. Oh yeah, dear Xander, I hope you are well. I wrote you a haiku poem. If Team Snagum Goons cause trouble in the desert, go and sandbag them. That was from Egan, and I remember I had a good laugh about that in the original Let's Play. Like, thinking that was just a poem, but then I remembered haikus, 14 words. And I was like, I sat here for a minute debating if these items were worth my time. I eventually, in the end, did decide that they weren't. Which might have been a foolish decision, I don't know. You can tell me it was if all you want. Wahaha, you thought there was no one this way, didn't you? You're not getting off the hook that easy. And so, Colist was our next opponent. And Colist gave me a little bit of trouble, actually. Starting off with a camera up and a wheezing. And I'll explain in a minute here. Well, past me, we'll explain here in a minute. It, it'll make a bit more sense here in a second. But we had Bob Ross. I believe we just went all out. This battle went after camera. No, we actually went after Weezing, too. And man, I gotta say, this team, once you see what the sixth member is, which you will in a minute, I am really proud of this team. This was a team that, if you watch other people talk about these Pokemon, they're like, eh, these aren't the best Pokemon you can pick to play through XD, even with XD only having 83 Shadow Pokemon to pick from. And then a few Wild Pokemon, and then the Evolutions. I probably picked some of the worst Pokemon, with the exception of Gardevoir. I probably picked some of the worst Pokemon you could pick in this game, honestly. I know I picked um, what to most is the worst evolution I could have picked. But I was really proud of the team in the end. And like I said, you can see here where the episode really gets bad with glitching and it was scaring me. After, like in editing, this got really annoying. And yes, I realize now that um, Psychic would have done a lot of damage to Weezing, but Weezing went down anyway. I'm watching back and being like, wow, I was an idiot for thinking these were good ideas. Like, there's a point where I forgot Sneasel was part Dark type. And then he, she sent out a Muck as well. I made a few Muck puns there. I think, like, raking in the Muck or whatever. Muck rakers and stuff like that. Then she sent out Rapidash up next, and Rapidash, this is what made me be like, oh, wait, it's not this Pokemon trainer. Rapidash was the next Pokemon, and obviously Rapidash wasn't going to be my next team member, because Rapidash is a fire type, and we already have a fire type on the team. So I picked what Pokemon, what moves I was going to use. Um, I decided to weaken Rapidash first because of my strategy of, this is where I started the strategy of not having more than one Shadow Pokemon on the field at all times because it felt safer that way, but that strategy obviously doesn't go too well for me later on with future opponents I won't name yet. But we went all out on Rapidash, taking it down as much as we could. I, for some reason, remembered paralyzing it, but it appears that it did not happen. 
as you see here, the episode's just becoming more and more unresponsive to try and watch. Like, it will crash Movie Maker if I even try and watch it. And so... I just went ahead and used an Ultra Ball here. I was like, oh, well, this should be a good enough HP to throw at it. And obviously, well, see here, the ball landed. You can't really tell what's going on, but it was one, two, and then it broke out. Not very often you see the ball shake twice and then break out, honestly. It used Shadow Sky, which is a very dangerous move sometimes, because it slowly whittles away your HP. It's like a Sandstorm, or it's like Sandstorm or Blizzard, really. Except for it doesn't affect Shadow Pokemon, as opposed to Ice, Ground, or Rock. And I think Shadow moves are powered up in it as well. I'm not, not entirely sure. By the way, here, I think I said here as well, this is how confident I am. We'll see in a moment here, if this is what I was thinking. Yes, I said I am this confident that we're going to catch the Rapidash on this turn. And we threw the Ultra Ball, and you can't really tell what's going on, but one, two, three, we caught it. And then out came Macargo, which is also a Shadow Pokemon. Take it away, Pat Xander. Okay, yeah, so when it comes down to it, uh, the recording got really bad from here, so it kind of became impossible to watch. So, yeah, I failed to snag my cargo, meaning we're going to have to go after Mirror B. But then a little bit after that, we took on a duo of Cypher Peons named Carbon and Petro. Now, Carbon had a Shadow Hitmonchan, which we actually managed to catch on a regular Pokeball. It had, took a lot of time, though. had to weaken it down. And then up next was Hitmonlee, and I was like, whoa, that's a Shadow Hitmonlee. And Hitmonlee was like... Yeah, what are you going to do about it? And now back in 2013, something similar happened with the Hitmonlee when I had a really hurt Jolteon and I caught that Hitmonlee in one Pokeball, or one Ultra Ball. So I was like, all right, we're going to do that again. And Hitmonlee was like, oh yeah, I'd like to see you try. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe I will. And I was like, yeet! And the Hitmonlee was like, whoa! And then the Ultra Ball was like, ding! On the first Ultra Ball full of health. And then I was like... Oh my god! Oh my god! And then with that, Hitmonlee became the sixth member of our team, rounding it out with our final member. And then I was like, alright, bye everybody, I've been LS11, and I'll see you all next time.